uh, celebration, even though we had Easter Day last Sunday, we also have a whole season of being thankful for the Sundays that follow. And we have a tradition on the Sunday after Easter Sunday of doing the flowering of the cross. And that is to remind us that even though Jesus died on the cross, and of course that was a hard thing for us people that believe in, in Jesus to see your Lord and Savior die on the cross, it also is a beautiful thing because, of course, he is risen. And we are able to celebrate his resurrection. And so something that is representative of suffering and hardship and all of that sacrifice kind of gets turned into something quite beautiful through the resurrection. And that's why we put flowers on the cross to remind us of that hope that comes from his death on the cross, that hope of resurrection. And so we place these on here, these flowers, and then after the service, we will place the, place the whole cross outside so that the entire community, as they drive up and down Main Street, can see this beautiful flowering cross. So we're glad you're with us today to worship God, and we're going to start off with this song called What a Beautiful Name It Is. Word of word at the beginning. Born with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful day. 
Kelly, and I will be your lead reader today. Uh, I'd like to ask if there's any announcements or celebrations of Sarah for her request at this time. And we will pass the microphones. <coughs> Make sure we can hear one another. You'll see the upcoming events on the back of your program. 
This coming Saturday, we've got quite a lot going on because we've got to, we're going to walk along Main Street and pick up some trash. And then if anybody wants to come help, all you got to do is meet here at 9 o'clock that morning, meet in our parking lot. And then um, we have the memorial service for E.T. over at Scott Funeral Home. And then in the evening, we have Jim's program. Do you want to say something about it? Uh, no, I just hope I can get as many people would like to uh, see some beautiful pictures and uh, some good information about I'm sure you've never heard before. And it's for the benefit of the food pantry. So my wife will be there taking the items as you walk through the door. Just a simple little donation or a few bucks, whatever. Uh, she'll be there collecting and we plan to have a uh, very light uh, uh, tree capture. Uh, but I've got a pretty good pool game set up. I think uh, I think a lot of people don't even really know anything about astronomy. We're really, really like we'll see a bunch of you there. Yep, yeah, we're looking forward to it. So many of you probably got the email this past week that we have a, a, a item of mixed emotions, I call it. Our music director, Matt, who's been with us since 2016, well, really even longer than that because he grew up in our church, but he's been officially the director since 2016. He just got an offer for a full-time job, which he accepted, um, and it's happening all really quickly. I think he starts tomorrow or one day this week, so today's his last day with us, unfortunately. We are going to still see him from time to time because he'll come back and join us from time to time as like a special music guest. But as far as seeing him week to week, we're not going to have him with us anymore. So we, we have a couple things we wanted to share with you. So come on up here. <laughs> and after the service, too, I hope everybody can come down to the social hall for coffee hour. And we can all get the chance to, to say, you know, best wishes to Matt and all that. And just how appreciative we are. It's been a, a wonderful time, you know, having you and your, the talents you brought to the table here with so many different instruments and just your enthusiasm and I'm also especially thankful because not only did you come on Sundays and participate in the life of our congregation but you went on with me on the road so to speak where we traveled around to many nursing facilities and provided residents with a lot of music and I know they're really going to miss that too so we got some gifts for you here this this first one has to be read because our entire music committee could not be here today, so they asked me to, to read this, um, especially Barbara, Barbara Benson couldn't be here. So I'm going to read this. It says, Matt, what do you say about a person who has been an absolute blessing in your life? You say thank you. You have made being on the music committee so much fun. Your commitment to our church has been tremendous, and you have left us with some very large shoes to fill. We will always hold you dear and wish you all success in your life. The only way this is even slightly easier for us is the fact that we know this is not a goodbye. This is a see you later friend. And it says, uh, Reverend Zach will now present you with some special props to help you understand better how we feel about you. And this is from the music committee, uh, Love, Barbara, Sue, Sandy, and Betsy. So here we go. Smarties, and it says, Smarties, you are one of the smartest people we know. <laughs> lifesavers, you were an absolute lifesaver for our church, especially during the pandemic. You and Reverend Zach were the glue that held our church services together. Don't worry, I'll give you the bag after two. <laughs> M&M's. Matt Miskin. <laughs> it says, I had to. This candy was made for you. Okay. Starburst, because you are a star. Skittles, your creativity is colorful. Snickers, because you were a little nutty, and I appreciate that. 100 grand, you are worth this and much, much more. And then the committee has another gift, which is wrap. Does the committee want it to open it here and now, or wait? Why, it flies well, right? 
Since he's not like moving away or anything, we'll still get to hear updates, how he's doing, how his job's going, and all that stuff. And that, that makes this a little easier too. You know, like like Barbara said in the note, it's not like you're leaving, leaving, you're just leaving the position. So we'll still have you around, which will be great. And we'll look forward to participating in your journey as you as you move forward into the full-time working world. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for this. Sunday after Easter Sunday, the second Sunday in the Easter season, the opportunity to be together and to worship you. No matter what is going on in our lives, perhaps some of us are in a time of celebration, perhaps some of us are in a time of, of difficulty, and perhaps for many of us, we have a little bit of both happening in our lives. And so we have a lot on our hearts, a lot running through our minds and our spirits today, we bring it all to you in prayer. We think about things going on here locally, perhaps a family member or a friend here local who's going through something. And we think about things going on in the wider world, too. We certainly think about what's going on in Ukraine. And we bring all of this to you. We place our lives in your hands and we ask that your will be done. We thank you for Matt, and we ask for blessings to be with him as he journeys forward. And we ask that you be with our congregation as we have to now enter into a search process for a new director. Give us your guidance as we do that. As we get into this spring season, oh God, and the weather starts to get warmer, we start to get outside more, be with us and help us to appreciate the beauty of your creation. Help us to enjoy every moment of it. Help us to be thankful and help us to live our lives as a response to that thanksgiving, to be your servants, to be people who strive every day to be followers of Jesus. We ask all these things in his name. Amen. And we'll sing together for the beauty of the earth.
Did any of you notice what's on the pew there? So you know what that means, right? Time for a prayer shawl blessing. We've got, already got another batch of beautiful prayer shawls that have been knit together. Do we have any of our volunteer knitters here today? If so, I'd like to, I always like to have our knitters be acknowledged. Any of our knitters here? We have a lot that are not able to be here regularly, but that do some knitting. Oh, we've got a couple with us. So we appreciate that. We even have people out of state that are part of our congregation, but they've moved out of state, and they still knit shawls, and they either mail them to us, or when their family is there visiting them, they'll pick up a box of them and bring them, bring them back to us. And I got this special blessing from Ellen Anderson uh, last week. She gave me this. And this is something that kind of talks about what the recipient of these shawls, the ways that the recipients of these shawls are blessed, okay? When you wrap yourself in this shawl, bless yourself in the name of the Father who loves you, the Son who is your brother and friend, and the Holy Spirit who guides you every step. Prayers were prayed every stitch that this shawl would keep you warm, make you feel strong, and help you feel better. May this shawl calm you and remind you that God loves you, and help you remember that your guardian angel is always watching over you. When you wear this shawl, believe with all your heart that God is with you every minute of every hour of every day. Jesus loves you no matter what. And the Holy Spirit rests upon your shoulder, especially when you are sad or lonely. May this shawl bring you sweet dreams when you sleep. So that's a beautiful blessing for the recipients. And now, all of us that are here, can you all stand up and place your hand on one of the shawls? Repeat after me, dear God, please bless these shawls. We dedicate them to you, to your service, to your glory. May the recipients receive the blessings that we just read. And may those who knit these shawls also be blessed by you. O oh God, these may be given in a time of celebration or in a time of sadness. Either way, give your warmth, your strength, your love, your peace, your hope to those who receive these. That they will know your love and that they will spread your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, now take up your offering before Sunday school.
multiply them. Use them to serve you. Bless all of us. Help us to learn. Help us to grow. And help us to serve you. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, okay, enjoy Sunday school.
have yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. Amen. Anybody been saving up any jokes to share? I've got a whole stack of cards up them here, but I also want to invite anybody that wants to. You got one? Oh boy, here we go. What happens if you walk by a. I missed the last part. A moon in a cloud? Was that it? Okay, what happens? Cloud moon. Cloud moon. Alright. <laughs> A lot of churches on the Sunday after Easter will do like humor Sunday. The whole service is just sort of joyful, um, different types of humor, different types of jokes, just as a way to say like after Lent, which can be such a more somber kind of season, and now we're into the rejoicing of Easter, it's good to kind of, you know, truly rejoice and, and be thankful, be happy, and, you know, share, share a lot of humor. So I do have several of my cards here today. I have a friend who writes music about sewing machines. He's a singer songwriter. <laughs> or so it seems. <laughs> if any, I think we shared this one before, but it's been a while. If anyone gets a message from me about canned meat, don't open it. It's spam. <laughs> Why did the candle fall in love? It found the perfect match. <laughs> Diet tip. Eat food off of other people's plates, because that's their calories, so they don't count. <laughs> and this one's my favorite. A wise man once told his wife nothing, because he was a wise man. <laughs> It's so important to be thankful for every moment, to be thankful for God's presence in our lives. You can have a variety of things going on in your life, and I'm sure we all do, but to be able to say, no matter what is going on, I know that God loves me, I know that God is with me, I know that God will never leave me, and anytime we need a reminder, we have beautiful reminders in passages such as the one we just read today. We often talk about this as, as like the Doubting Thomas story, but there's so much more that's going on in this passage. And it says a lot about the love of God, that here Jesus has died on the cross and is risen. His disciples are pretty much learning he's risen. The, the women were already at the tomb. They've already told the disciples he's not there, he's risen. And so they're starting to put the pieces together. He could have said, they're all set. I already prepped them before my death. They, they knew this was going to happen. And now they've seen the empty tomb. They know it's, it's good. They're good. But God loves us enough to say, no, I'm going to show up again. <laughs> not only did I live my life on earth for 33 years, and not only did I travel around and have a three-year public ministry in, you know, in person, but even though I've died and I'm risen, I'm going to come again to them and show them. God understands us. One of the things I love about this passage is it's so relatable, right? We all have our times of doubt, right? Who's had like a time of doubt in your life? Should pretty much be everybody. It's natural as a human to have like times of doubt or, or, or a situation where it causes us to, to feel some doubts in our lives. This shows us the depth that God will go to in understanding us and knowing that we're going to have doubts. I'm going to go, I'm going to appear to them. 
Jesus says. Thomas is one of my favorite biblical characters. I've probably talked about this before. Because of the fact that he's so relatable. Like, I could see myself doing that. Like, here Jesus has appeared to these disciples, but Thomas wasn't there. So Thomas is like, and comes back, and they're like, guess what we saw? And he's like, well, I want to see it for myself. I need to see it for myself. Otherwise, I'm not going to believe. And I think that's a very relatable thing for all of us. I think a lot of us would say something very similar. Like, well, I want to see. I want to be able to see. And I've always loved the character of Thomas for that. He is having a moment of doubt. He's also having a moment of seeking. In other words, he could have said, eh, I don't believe you, see you, and just, you know, said, I'm done with you guys, and left. But he had enough in, in there to say, no, I'm, I'm, I hear what you're saying, but I want to see it. I want to be part of it. And I love that about him. And I wanted to name, well, we have one Tom here today who's had his birthday. I wanted to name my son Thomas, my, our second one. And we didn't, he's Connor, but his middle name is Thomas. And he's not because we have any Toms in the family. His middle name is Thomas after the biblical, this particular biblical character. Because he's so relatable. How many of us go through something in life and it just, it makes those doubts rise up in us. And we want to be able to see something for ourselves and touch it ourselves and hear it ourselves. And all those senses, we want to be able to do that ourselves. And Jesus could have said... I've already risen. I've done the things I've, I said I was going to do. You guys need to figure the rest out on your own. He doesn't do that. He comes and stands among them. Not only does he come and stand among them, but he says, peace be with you. He could have said, I'm here, but I'm kind of upset that you guys are in here hiding. You know, it tells us they're hiding behind locked doors because they're afraid. Here, Jesus got persecuted. They're thinking they may be the next ones to be put on the cross. So they're hiding in this house. They're scared. The door's locked. And Jesus could have said, you guys need to figure this out on your own. But instead, he comes to them and he says, peace. I want you to know God's peace. And I want to give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And he gives them that gift. And basically, that's his way of saying, now you have everything you need. I've given you peace and I've given you the Spirit, which is that part of God that's always present with us. Now you have everything you need to continue my ministry, to live your lives, to shine God's light and spread God's love in the world. But he didn't have to do that. He could have said, figure it out on your own, guys. I've already been prepping you for three years that this stuff was going to happen. Now you've got to run with it on your own. You've got to deal with it. whatever doubts you have or anything else you've got going on in your life. But he comes among them. Thomas isn't there. He could have said, I already came to the rest of them. Tell Thomas he's got to get over it. He doesn't do that. He comes again so that Thomas can actually see him. He can see the wounds. He can see his wounded hands and his side. And he can believe. But that's not the only thing. You know, I've already named several things that are happening in this passage. There's more. Not only does he give them that peace, not only does he give them that Holy Spirit, but he gives them a very powerful little speech. Forgiveness. If you forgive others, they are forgiven. If you retain, it will be retained. And that's a powerful message then, and it's still a powerful message 2,000 plus years later. Because a lot of us, just like we deal with our doubts, we also deal with a lot of issues around forgiveness, right? A lot of us struggle with that. Somebody did something to you or somebody neglected to do something for you, and we have a very hard time letting go of that. We, we hold on to it. We hold grudges. I mean, I know, and you probably all know too, I know many, many families, even within their family, they're not even talking to each other because they're holding on to stuff. Like, yeah, something happened like 20 years ago, and now we don't talk to Uncle so-and-so. How many people know somebody like that? See? Look! <laughs> even within their own family. And so here's Jesus giving this powerful reminder. One of the greatest teachings I've given you in my ministry is about forgiveness. And I want to remind you now that I'm appearing to you risen, that if you forgive, it is done. Because God is with you and God will make it happen. But if you hold on to it, it will be held on to. And so he leaves them with this very powerful, one of the most um, deeply touching things we can do in our lives is to work on forgiveness. I tell people all the time, I know forgiveness is hard. I've struggled with it myself. It doesn't mean you have to do it, um, that you're always going to be able to do it perfectly and in an instant. But we want to be working on it. We want to be working toward it. Being shut off to the possibility of it, that's 
where there's a little bit of a challenge there. We don't want to be shut off to the possibility of it. We want to at least say, like, I might not be there yet, but I'm working on it. I'm striving toward it. One day at a time, one moment at a time. I tell people all the time, maybe write a letter. These are things you can do if you're struggling with forgiveness. Write a letter. Doesn't mean you have to mail it, but you could mail it. Or it could just be for you as a way to kind of journal your feelings. That's a way to work on it. Obviously, prayer is a great way to work on it. Reading the Bible is a great way to work on it. Music. Um, uh, thinking about what's happened and making lists. Like, what are the pros and cons to whatever it is you're trying to forgive? Um, so there's practices we can do to be working on it. And I've had people tell me, like, thank you, those practices are helpful. I may not still be there yet. Or, yes, I did get there. I was able to do it. I got there. But even if you haven't gotten there yet, be in prayer about that. Be working on it. You don't want to shut off to it. Because Jesus says, if you retain it, it's going to be retained. And I don't think he wants us to be retaining things like that in our lives. So he gives them his appearance twice. The peace of God. The Holy Spirit. Which is that reminder that forgiveness is possible because God's with us and God's going to help us. And, and anything else is possible. He comes behind through the doors, even though they're closed and locked. And this is a sending of the disciples. Now that they have this peace, now that they have this Holy Spirit, and now that they've been given this reminder about forgiveness, they have to now go and continue this ministry. And it's the same for us 2,000 plus years later. We have to be out in the world practicing all these things. Practicing the fact that we know God is with us and therefore all things are possible. Doesn't mean we're going to be perfect at it, but we want to strive toward it. And we have this good news with us as we do it. That he is risen. Because he's risen, we can do anything. We can do anything because God is with us. Jesus says there at the end, well, God, John's gospel says at the end, this is just a few of the things Jesus has done. He's done many, many, many more things that aren't even in John's gospel. But the ones that are there are recorded so that we may come to believe. And I, I say this a lot. My favorite definition of faith is not belief. Uh, belief's okay. I mean, belief's good. It's nice to believe in God. But I like the definition of faith that is faith is trust. Because to me, that's taking it another to another level. Like, I can believe in something, but that doesn't always mean I'm going to necessarily like, practice it. To me, faith is trust, meaning I believe in God and I place my life in God's hands. Like, I trust my life to God. So if I trust my life to God, if I have that level, then that means every day, every moment, I'm going to try to live that way. Not just think in the back of my head, like, yeah, I believe in God, and then just do whatever. But like, no, I trust in God, therefore I have to live my life in alignment with that. And so when we read passages like this, it's that reminder we can place our trust in God. If God loves us enough to not only send his son, not only have his son die on the cross, his son rises, and then he comes twice just because he understands that we're going to have doubts and we need to see. And so, in a way, we can live vicariously through these disciples. We can relate to the fact that they were doubting a little bit, and what did he do? He came. That's love. Now, will we go out and practice the things that Jesus wants us to practice? Will we forgive? Will we love others? Will we know we have the Spirit with us so all things are possible? Will we trust our entire lives to God? Not trusting the world, because the world's always going to let you down. Trusting God. I hope we all can go from here today in this Easter season. And just remember, anytime you're encountering anybody, whether it be somebody within your own family, maybe there's a grudge held there, or it could be a complete stranger. Whether we're encountering anybody, that one moment of interaction could mean the world. So don't take for granted any interactions that you have or any moments you have to be a blessing in God's name to someone.
Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us respond to God's word now by giving generously as we collect this morning's offering.
bless all of us. Use us all according to your will. That everywhere we go, we can bless others in your name. And we can live our lives as an offering to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And we'll sing number 64 together.
out on him. I hope enough people grew up or had children that grew up watching Sesame Street and <laughs> might be able to sing along with me to this. <laughs> You know the words again. Yes, yeah. 